Hello, this is uh, Shadi Safadi from uh, One Pixel Brush, and uh, I'm going to do a little sketch here in Mischief, uh, testing out this program. I've only been using it for about 15 minutes, and it's so easy to use. I mean, it's it's pretty simple, but the tools are just obvious and intuitive. Um, I didn't look anything up. I didn't have to figure anything out. I just clicked on everything and kind of got the gist. Um, what it is is a software that kind of has infinite resolution on the line work. So that means you can zoom in. Uh, to an infinite degree and keep the same resolution. Line work is not resolution dependent, which is kind of amazing. So it's a great tool for doing what I'm exactly doing now, which is really loose, stylized animation style sketching. Uh, because you can move the canvas anywhere you want, you can doodle things really quickly, and if you zoom in and out of it, it doesn't matter how much you zoom in and out, it's going to stay uh, the same resolution. You can just zoom in infinitely. Now, of course, if you export it to anything like Photoshop, that's kind of where um, you hit the ground running, where you have to actually see how this actually pans out. You can just export your line work at basically any resolution. So that's another amazing thing about it, is that uh, your line work can be exported 20K wide if you want, after you're done using it. All right, so my thought with this guy is uh, I was kind of trying to create a little barbarian. I knew he was going to be round, basically. Uh, I knew he was going to be just a lump of meat. Um, I knew that I wanted to be pretty big, so I'm messing around with his eyes quite a bit to make him feel large enough by making his eyes smaller. Um, sometimes making eyes bigger like that, like it just did, is uh, makes the character feel too cutesy. Um, and without reducing any of the funniness of a character, if you make their eyes smaller relative to their body, um, they'll look bigger. It's the same with a basketball player that's seven feet tall's eyeballs are roughly the same size as a regular person's. Um, so eyes are eyeballs and size of eyeballs and how far apart they are is a, a huge indicator of scale. Um, also, my theme for this guy, as I was kind of evolving, it became sort of a bone man. Um, just to make it fun for myself, I wanted to give him a clear theme. So I gave him this helmet that has two horizontal femur bones. And femur bones are fun because they have a weird, they, they don't look like dog, I mean, they're the, they're the one that is traditionally the dog bone. bone. Uh, but uh, but they have, if you, if you do one circular part of the bone and one kind of differently shaped one, it looks more naturalistic. And even though I'm doing something cartoony, I want the bone shapes to be stylized but naturalistic still. Um, and of course he's a barbarian, so he's going to have some sort of big bulbous beard, he's going to have a hairy chest, um, and he's got two daggers in his hand of some kind. Um, as I was messing around with it, I realized, ah, you know, it might be nice if his, if his beard was partitioned into these loops, you know, into these giant chunks, and each chunk had like a bone hanging from the end of it. Again, giving, it, giving myself the bone theme really helps to, to, to make it a little more fun uh, for myself, like saying, and it helps to kind of push him in a direction, make him less generic. Um, so then I decide, okay, the daggers maybe are bones. Uh, the wrap around his waist is a wrapped sort of something tunic thing that's wrapped around a bone. Um, the little danglies on his beard are bones. And see, now you can see I'm zooming in. In or out, doesn't matter. Resolution is, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, it'll stay infinity resolution. Um, the mouth and the expression on the mouth, I'm just playing around with here a little bit. I kind of thought he should have gaping, like kind of growling teeth or maybe... Um, it's kind of an open ooh mouth shape, but that didn't really fly for me either. Um, so I kind of decided to stop doing that um, and to erase it. Um, and overall, this character was based on something that I had already uh, had in my mind on the story that I've been working on. Um, this barbarian, all these barbarians are just really, uh, they're just balls of meat. That was the idea. They're spherical balls of meat. Um, so now, after I finished on that last layer, you can see I turned it down to like very low percentage and put another layer on top, which is old hat. Everybody knows this. When you're, when you're drawing, you draw on a layer underneath. You know, back in the day, it was with blue pencil. Uh, nowadays, you just put it on a separate layer in Photoshop. But in this case, in Mischief, you do the exact same thing. Uh, and I can redraw it. And this time, I know what the basic gist is, and I'm focusing on a drawing that is really f figuring out those shapes in a sexy way. Uh, what are those? Sh what are those shapes actually going to be? Um, and a second pass drawing. I mean, I think you're lucky if a second pass drawing uh, works, because sometimes I could do a third pass or a fourth pass uh, layer of drawing. In this in this demo, I'm just going to do a second pass. Um, but it really helps to kind of clarify all the shapes and stylize them a bit more, and not even worry about what's underneath. And you can see I don't have reference that I'm looking at, but I'm imagining the kind of structure of these bones to make them feel a little more naturalistic. 
Um, I still like the idea of his head being just kind of a dome with these perfectly horizontal bones sticking out. I think it's kind of funny. Um, and, uh, man, Mischief has this really nice line weight feel. Like, you know, some brushes in Photoshop have nice weight to them. Uh, and some don't. You kind of have to find the right custom brush or find one someone made or make one yourself. Um, but the, the brushes here in this program naturally already feel uh, really nicely weighted, meaning when you push light, they're light. When you push hard, they're hard, which is great for drawing. It's great for getting thin and thick. Um, and you can't see that I'm doing this, but I actually have um, brush size mapped to the touch strip on the bottom of my 22HD Wacom Cintiq. So that, that I always have brush size mapped map to a touch strip. I really like that uh, feel. And so I'm changing it a little bit on the fly for bigger lines or thicker lines. I also, what you can't see off, off um, page on my second monitor, is I'm looking at a style of art that I really like. So I'm trying to emulate it. Because how many lines you put in there to, to indicate the hairs and how much detail you put in is all like uh, really subjective. And you kind of, it's nice to have somebody's art who you think is awesome. That you, that you really like the style of, so that you can make sure to not, let's say, do more detail than they would do, or add more stuff than they would add. Um, here I'm just saying, all right, well maybe the ends of these, every single end of his beard has like a bone shape attached to it, or some sort of like, yeah, like each hair thing is wrapping around a different bone, and each one is like a weird, random, broken bit of bone. Um, that was an important mark because I feel like the body itself as I'm zooming out here to kind of get a better sense of it, um, the, the way those uh, pecs, sort of those saggy pecs hang on his body is going to be really important in like reading his form. Um, and, you know, for the final, when I, when I get farther along with it, all on this, I'm just going to do a sketch. For the final, it's, uh, it's nice to have a little bit of detail. So I, you can see I'm adding a, a couple indications of hair within each hair, just to tell, but not too much, uh, just a kind of little amount. Nipples are always key, because nipples always kind of tell you the direction that that torso is sort of facing. Uh, and I'm just trying to, like, get it just nailed in one stroke. Like, where is that exact mark going to be? Where's his belly button? Where's his hairs? And each of those marks, I'm doing them fast, but I'm not keeping them if they don't, if they're not correct in my mind, perfectly correct. I'm trying to get them to all have movement and rhythm. You notice every mark is a flick. I'm not drawing slowly or methodically. I'm, and, I'm, of course, this is double speed, but still, I'm like trying to draw everything with a flick. Um, as I get down to the hands, I realize it's been a long time since I drew, and I don't know how to draw hands. I need reference, but I'm not getting it. What I really needed to do was stop and like look at some, take some photo reference of myself holding stuff to really improve my uh, drawing of hands. But I kind of struggle with it here for a little bit because I didn't do that, and I suck at hands. Um, which is really shameful, right? Everyone sucks at hands. You, you need to figure that out in like figure drawing class. But uh, I, I give up on the hand facing that way, and I just turn it this way so it'll be an easier hand to draw, uh, which is a nice cop out. And I, you know, in this from this angle, I can kind of figure it out a hand basically, although it's still really not coming along. Um, his hand, his arm is just kind of a big sausage, which I think works uh, for him. Um, you know, in this drawing too, his feet are these tiny little twigs. So I'm getting out of drawing the two hardest things, the hands and the feet. <laughs> uh, but you know, for someone with, with, who's better with more experience, I think, or if I were to like study it just a little bit better, I think I could, you know, obviously get a hand that worked out. This one is even kind of a little more of a struggle. I'm actually holding my hand up in front of the screen, um, panicking a little bit and being like, what the hell? I don't know how to draw a damn hand from that angle. Um, and you'll notice I'll come back to that hand a couple times cause it just, uh, look, even looking at my hand, I'm not able to figure it out very well. And even in the end, I think it looks okay, but it definitely needs some love. Um, getting to the body, um, for something like this, I think, you know, these kind of baggy pants with a tiny little foot, not only gets you out of drawing the foot, but it also makes him like a little bit cuter and funnier that he's got this giant body and these tiny, tiny little legs. Um, you know, Pixar movies do it all the time. A lot of animation styles do it. I personally think there's really like not a lot of cartoonish looking styles that look good. There's really only a handful in my mind. Um, like the Tangled style is really great. Um, most of the Pixar movies have a really beautiful style. But you'll notice whenever you see amateur animation style stuff, they stylize things in a way that's weird and grotesque and bad. 
You know, any time it's like not prose because there's so it's such a subtle game stylizing things to make them appealing. And as soon as you start making the eyes too big or the head too big for the body or the ears stick out too much or there's a, or the shapes aren't simplified enough, um, you'll notice his head, neck, body, and everything is all connecting in one giant arch. And that's something that you see in animation style, pro animation style stuff a lot. And all, that's all I'm doing is having noticed that I'm just trying to copy that. I'm trying to copy animation styles that I've seen that pro companies, pro studios use that look good. Because it's just nothing more depressing than uh, than like you see like a juice commercial where they hired some you know half-ass art team to come up with the animation style or the style of the characters, and they feel like they can just stylize them however they want, and they just look really cheesy. You ever seen like a I don't know what it is like a commercial for some shitty thing like a, a juice from Brazil, and that they have their own characters, and the characters just look bad. Um, so I try to be careful to really respect what the animation styles that have obviously worked are, and to emulate them. Because your character is still going to be your character. Uh, no matter what style you're trying to copy, no one's going to look at it and be like, wait a second. I mean, maybe if you do the, the, the Glenn Keane um, tangled girl face, that's probably the most iconic. So if you copied that exactly, someone might call you out on it, but almost nothing else. Um, so I did the bone wrap around his around his tummy, and uh, I decided, you know what? He needs like a bump on his head. I liked I liked what was there, the curve, but he just needs a little extra something just to give him like a rhinoceros sort of vibe. I don't even understand really what the hell that thing is. Um, and then the bone around his his hips, it still needs more work. I worked on it here for a second, but you know it doesn't really quite feel like a bone, so it probably needs a little more work. Um, and then, uh, you know, as I was looking at it, I think I realized, like, maybe his his left, our camera right boob is kind of in the wrong spot. He needs to be have, like, a little bit of a wider chest. So I kind of struggle with this just a little bit. And it's hard to kind of make that right mark, but you, you want to make it as quickly as you can. You don't, want it, you don't want it to be belabored. You want it to just be done in one mark. So you'll notice here, I kind of struggle with it back and forth to try to get that one line sort of looking good. Um, and just redrawing that nipple. Again, the nipple is like determines the direction that it's that this whole chest is kind of facing. It's a big perspective. It's a bit, really bit important thing for perspective. All right, so you get him to this point. Um, the cool thing about it is you turn this off. You got this guy right here. And no matter what layer you need it at, I mean, what resolution you need it as, uh, you just go here and say, you know what? I want a 6K, 6,000 pixel. JPEG. You know what? PSD. Save as. Let's just call it Bonehead. So you export it out to 6K, open that same thing, that PSD in Photoshop, and you got every layer sorted out in super high res. Um, and it just imagines where the edge of the picture is. Um, you could even export it to higher res than that, and you can feel free to color it. You could color in mischief, but you could also take it into Photoshop and do whatever you want with it, and you have high res lines no matter how you drew it. Um, so yeah, I think it's a awesome program, especially for sketching, and especially um, if you don't want to be worried about what, how big your file size is or where you're drawing on the page. Uh, one amazing feature, actually, that I uh, forgot to mention, um, because this is, you know, infinity resolution based, you can't quite bring pictures into it. Uh, so instead, what I found uh, is a really cool feature that they added. If I had something like that, like if I wanted to, you know, uh, have some reference or I wanted to draw over something or I had some idea of what I wanted, you can take the whole entire program and make it translucent which is kind of amazing, um, allowing you to sort of just freely draw on a layer that is uh, separate from uh, what's behind it. So if you wanted to like redraw this guy or you had some reference that you wanted to throw in there, they kind of figured out a way around it. I mean, of course, you can always have reference on a screen next to you. Right, but if you wanted to draw on top of a drawing, and it's something that you couldn't import, which is tricky again because it's got its own sort of way of um, creating lines and files, you can always go in 
and just open it in Photoshop and draw right on top of it, making the entire interface um, translucent. You can move it around to wherever you want. And this moving around is great because you can slide something over and then draw some more. And if you don't like that, slide that over. It's a really nice feature. All right, so a great program, especially for cartoony or stylized illustration. Um, really great as a starting point. There's a freedom to being able to move around, and there's a freedom to not having resolution that I think allows you to kind of sketch more openly, not to mention the way the brushes sort of make actual marks. They're just more beautiful. They're less, they're dampened, they're smoothed out. Uh, and you'll notice that as soon as you start sketching with it. Um, program has a lot more cool stuff, but uh, I'm just scratching the surface. So uh, that's what I came up with. It's, uh, oh, check it out. All right, thanks a lot.